I don't believe he pre-existed as literally the son of God. I believe he existed in the plan and mind of God. Why do you believe that? Because the Bible says so. Where? In Acts 2. Acts 2, 22. Is that what you're going to quote? Mm, yes. Yeah, but Acts is written by Luke, correct? Yes. Okay, so uh, why would you start in Acts 2 when Luke begins in, in Luke chapter 1? That's not how you interpret the Bible by skipping what the author mm -hmm. writes. He begins mm -hmm. his discussion in Luke chapter 1 because in Acts 1, he's writing to the same person, Theophilus, right? Mm -hmm. So why are you beginning in Acts 2.22 when it's Peter preaching to the Jews, the same Jews that had Jesus crucified, and he emphasized that Jesus is a man because he can't mm -hmm. begin, he can't begin by telling the Jews that Jesus is the God of the Old Testament in the flesh. So why are you starting in Acts chapter 2? I mean, that's when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And he started preaching. So that's the message that he wants to share to the whole world. There were so many thousands of people mm -hmm. there. He could have used any words. He could yes. have said, the Son of God died for you. But he chose this particular but words. Did, did the Son of God die for them? Yes, he did. Okay, he could have also say? said, like how Trinitarians say, that okay, God can you show me an Acts 2, me. sister, can you show me an Acts 2 where he says, Jesus, Son of God, who died for you? That's what I'm telling you, brother. It doesn't say that. But is it true, though? Right. Is he the Son of God? It's true. It Did is he true. die for I us? didn't deny that. But he is using a specific word. Mm -hmm. And not like Trinitarians. Trinitarians have the way of saying that God died for us. No, I'll so get to the Trinitarians. Do. Don't, please don't tell us what Trinit. I'm a Trinitarian. Don't tell me how we preach. What I'm telling you is okay, I'm going by God. your logic. I'm going by your logic. Sure. But he didn't say Jesus is son of God, and he didn't say he died for them. So why do you believe he's the son of God who died for you? Acts 2 doesn't say that. Okay, I believe the son of God died because of what the Bible says in the other parts, like Matthew, Mark, Other parts. John, oh, Jesus, like, so. other parts. So thank you. You now proved my point. So let's go to the other parts and not stick to the part that you All think right, makes your case. You. Go to Luke chapter three and read verses one to six the word of god came to john the son of zachariah in the wilderness he went into all the region about the jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins as it is written in the book of the words of isaiah the prophet the void was crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the lord make his path straight what prophecy does john the baptist fulfill isaiah the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Okay, go to Isaiah chapter 40 and read verses 3 to 5. So it says, A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, the voice is preparing for who's coming? For who? Of the Lord. And make a, a highway for who? For Yahweh. Yeah, our God, oh. right? Okay, and then read verse 5 because that was also quoted. And the glory of... The Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And then in that same chapter, just so we make sure we're not missing the point, so we don't twist it, because we'll be sinning against God if we twist his word. Read verses 9 to 11. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Fear not, says the cities of Judah. Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Mm -hmm. Behold, his Lord is with him, and his recompense before him. Clearly, you read it, and if you're going to read it honestly, it says, your God is coming, and his arm will rule for him, and his re recompense comes with him. It's not a creature that's coming. It's Israel's God, yod heh vav -He, Jehovah. He is coming. So the voice that cries out is preparing for the coming of Jehovah God. Now, before we see who that is, I need you to go to Luke 7, 27. Okay, one second, brother. I need sure. little clarity on the Lord God mm -hmm. comes with might mm -hmm. and his arm rules for him. That's right. Keep reading. So based, yeah. And his recompense before him. Mm -hmm. So... Who do you think the arm rules for him? What do you think that means? It's going to backfire against you because in Isaiah, the arm of God is not a creature. It's God coming in his power. Go to Isaiah 59, 16, because I don't think you want to go there. It's not going to help your case. Go to Isaiah 59, 16, because the arm of the Lord is not a creature, not a man. It's God coming in his own power. So it's not going to help your case. Truth is lacking, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. The Lord saw it. And it's displeased him that were no justice. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no one to intervene. Mm -hmm. Then his own arm brought him victory 
and his righteousness upheld him. Yeah, so we don't twist the Bible and play ping pong with it. It says, because there was no man worthy enough mm -hmm. and no one, so God did it in his own arm. So the arm of God does not refer to a creature. It refers to God mm -hmm. coming in his own power. Now, to make that point clearer, go to Isaiah 63, verse 5. I looked, but there was no one to help. Mm -hmm. I was upheld, but there was no one to uphold. So my own arm bought me victory, and my wrath upheld me. Yes, now I know because you fear God and you respect the Bible, you're not going to play games with it. So we just read it. God's arm is not a man or a creature. It's God coming in his own power, in his own strength, which is why in Isaiah 40 it says, Behold your God. Make a highway for our God, not a creature. So we're not going to play games and change the meaning of the words. So now with that said, mm -hmm. we've established who the arm is. The arm is God's own power, not a creature. Now, before I show you who that yes. is, can you go to Luke mm -hmm. 7, 27? One second, brother. I need a little more clarity there. You mm -hmm. said a who, yes. right? Mm -hmm. You already established that it's not a who. It's God's power, no. right? I'm going to establish it's that it's a who. It's, a, it's God in the flesh. You be patient. I'll show you because I can give you more verses. But for clarity, we're not going to play games. Let's go to Luke 7, 27 to get more clarity. So it says, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, who shall prepare the way before thee. Okay, so Jesus says, John is the messenger mentioned in Malachi 3, verse 1. The messenger sent to prepare for your face. Now, can you go to Malachi chapter 3, verse 1? Behold, I send my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, mm -hmm. the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Okay, now, do you know what the words the Lord is in Hebrew? The Lord. It's not Adoni. It's not Adonai. It's not Adonenu. It's not Adonim. The words are ha Adon. Can I ask you, are the words Ha Adon ever used for anyone besides Jehovah? Do you know or no? I don't know. Father. Well, I'm going to help you, sister. That's why I'm here to be used of God to help you. The words Ha Adon are only used for the true God, never used for a man. Ha Adon. And if you want proof, it's not a man. It says suddenly the Lord whom you seek is coming to his temple. Now, sister in humanity, can you show me a verse in the Bible where the temple was built for a man and not for the true God? No, temple was not built for any man. Because the temple belongs to Jehovah. So mm -hmm. now you just read two verses, because I'm going to repeat this, because when I ask you a question, you read it. We're going to have to be honest to the Bible. You just read Malachi 3.1. A messenger is going to be sent, and when he shows up right away, suddenly after him, the Lord will be coming to his temple. The temple is built for Jehovah, not a man. And then in Isaiah 40, it says, a voice will be crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for Jehovah, yod He vav He, and make a highway for our God, the the Lord Jehovah's coming in his own arm, not a creature, but God Almighty. Right so far? Yes. Jesus just said John the Baptist is the messenger of Malachi 3 verse 1. And then you read in Luke 3 that John the Baptist is the voice of Isaiah chapter 40. So are we clear it's John the Baptist? Yes, the okay. messenger is John the Baptist. And he's the voice in the wilderness, right? Yes. Okay, go to Acts 19 verse 4. So it says that, and Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him. This is Jesus. Okay, so John the Baptist was preparing for Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but yes. the verses you read, sister, and, and again, I'm recording this. The verses you read said, John the Baptist is the voice, the messenger sent to prepare for Jehovah, Israel's God, the Lord who's coming to his temple. So now convince me, Jesus is just a man, when John the Baptist is preparing for Jesus, but the prophecies say the person that's coming, that John the Baptist is preparing for, is the Lord of the temple, who's coming to his temple, who is Jehovah our God. Now convince me, Jesus is not God in the flesh, he's just a man. Convince me. So when you say God in the flesh, uh, can I get a little clarity on that, please? Yes, it's John 1, verse 14, the word became flesh. What does that mean? It doesn't say God in flesh. It says the word. Yes, it does, actually. Became flesh. No, it does, because it says the word was God. And if the word was God, he became flesh. You can't separate that. John 1, 1 and 14. You can't separate the two. So it's 
okay brother when you read it in context it says the word became flesh let's not add words no sister we're not going to ignore verse 14 words. from john 1 1 john, john 1 14 didn't start in verse 14 it started one so let's not subtract from the word john 1 1 says the word was god and the word became flesh so no you don't start 14 and ignore verse one who is the word <laughs> The word was God who verses. became flesh. Now explain to me, what does it mean that the word was God? See, now we went there. Okay, I would say uh, that God was manifested in flesh. Right? That's like not what the verse says, though. Okay. That's not what the verse God says. God was manifested in flesh? That's what it says in the Bible. No, that's not what it says in John 1, nor does the prophecies that we read. Neither Malachi 3, nor Isaiah 40, nor John 1 says simply appeared in flesh. That's not what it says. God himself is coming. And then that word who is God became flesh, not simply appeared in flesh. But let's go back to Isaiah chapter 40 and Malachi 3.1. Who is coming according to Isaiah 40 and Malachi chapter 3.1? The coming one. I don't know what time you're meaning, but ultimately Yahweh is going to come. No, it doesn't say ultimately. Yeah. According to Matthew chapter 3 and Luke chapter 3, John the Baptist fulfills Isaiah chapter 40 and Malachi 3 1. He shows up, and both prophecies say when he shows up, God is coming to his temple. He's going to show up. In fact, Malachi 3 1 says, and then suddenly, not delayed in the distant future, suddenly the Lord whom you seek will come to his temple. That means right when John shows up, right away, immediately, the Lord is going to come to his temple. Who's the Lord that came to his temple? When you say that, it reminds me of when John the Baptist, the Baptist mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He baptized Jesus, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this, and suddenly the heavens were opened and a voice from heaven was heard. And Jesus is the temple, according <clears throat> to what I understand. And yes. Yahweh's Holy Spirit rested on him. Now, so what, right can you show me? God. Where does Matthew say Jesus is the temple? Because you didn't read Malachi 3 1 carefully. But where does Matthew say Jesus is the temple? Jesus himself says he is the temple of God, where? right? Let me where? find the verse for you. I know where. In John 2 19 22. So we're back to John 1 again. So you want to go back to John 1? In Matthew, it's not there, is it? No. Jesus says he's greater than the temple in Matthew 12. But the physical temple. Right? He's greater than the temple, the physical temple. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, sister, you confuse too many issues because you're not listening to the passage again. I'm going to let's go to Matthew 11, 10. I want you to pay attention because it's mm -hmm. not Jesus is the temple of God. Jesus is God who then created a body to be his temple. And I'll show you the difference in a minute. But you need to pay attention better because when you don't pay attention, you're going to make these mistakes. Go back to Matthew 11, 10. Mm -hmm. Behold, I send my bed messenger before thy face who shall prepare thy way before thee okay now before you move on who's speaking to who behold i send my messenger ahead of you to prepare prepare for your face right mm -hmm. who's speaking to who it's yahweh i think okay and yahweh's talking to who it says see mm -hmm. i am sending my messenger ahead of you to prepare for your face so the one who said i send my messenger is talking to someone who is he talking to? He's talking to the Lord again, Yahweh. The Lord is talking to the Lord. It's the Father speaking to the Son. Here you have the Father saying, I send my messenger at you to prepare for your face. That means it's the Son coming to his temple. It's not the Son who is the temple. He's the one coming to his temple. He is the God coming to his temple because the Father is saying, I'm going to send my messenger ahead of you to prepare your way which means the one who's coming is the Son, and it's the Son who's the Lord coming to his temple. That's how Jesus is interpreting it. It's not Jesus is the temple, and God shows up in Jesus' body. Jesus is the God who comes to the temple in Jerusalem.